Hello everybody, I thought I'd do a sort of series looking at gas masks and how good they would be for preppers. So what I want to do in this series is look at some of the most popular masks on the market that might be used for survivalists and then sort of, you know, have a more in-depth look at them in my experience as a collector of masks, how good they'd be compared to other masks, you know, for the price point, sort of what sort of features you'd get. So I thought I'd start off with the Israeli civilian mask. It's technically a Shalon 4A1. Most people just call it the Israeli civilian mask. So what are the features on this? There's a drinking tube on this side. I wouldn't personally ever bother using drinking tubes. I've gone into that before on other videos. Uh, there's an intake valve. A very clever intake on this can take both Soviet type Gost filters or Warsaw packed Soviet Gost filters and NATO Stanag filters. So it means you've got twice as many filter types available to you if you're using this mask than either a Western or an Eastern mask. And it's got a very primitive voice diaphragm. It's not a brilliant one, it's better than normal just exhale valve, but it's not as good as the voice diaphragms on a lot of proper military masks. But it is what it is. Um, as I said, there's the drinking tube there. Inside you have an inner mask with the drinking tube visible there. The lighting is probably going to be awful for this, sorry, but you might be able to see somewhere on there that there's an inner mask there and you've got your drinking tube on the inside there. The thing I like about the drinking tube on this mask is it's not invasive, it doesn't get in the way. So this mask did have a production date on it somewhere, it is 1989. Now supposedly according to Shalom's website they've been making this mask since 1969. I found lots of contradictory evidence on these masks and what the production dates were. But as far as I'm aware, they're still being made. I so said there's lots of variants to this. Some with one big eye lens panoramic view for industry, primarily. Versions with and without the drinking tube. Versions with rubber straps, versions with elastic straps. Ones with and without the voice diaphragm, as I said. You know, lots of different variants. They also make a smaller model for children. But one interesting thing is the adult size is a one size fits all mask, which is one of the reasons I think this is really clever. Is It's not the most comfortable mask in the world, but they've made one that's designed so you basically can fit it to most people's heads. You fully um, loosen the straps, they're quite big, then you tighten them till you've got a really good fit, rather than being more comfortable, but you need to know what size you have to get with a head measurement. So. For a prepper this is probably quite good because it's a one size fits all. So what I'm going to go into is sort of comfort of wearing it, how good the voice diaphragm is, um, using it for rifle sight to see what the sight pitch is like and um, you know any other features you might be interested in with it. So anyway, let's get started. I'll put the mask on and then we can look at some of the features. So putting the mask on is very simple. You might want to fully loosen the straps put it on the top of your head like that, pull it down to your head is inside it, then we start tightening all the straps up. There we go, that feels like I should have a pretty good seal there. Yeah, that's got an airtight seal. So as you can probably hear, the voice diaphragm isn't brilliant, but it works. Let's try and get that filter in. And it's easier to put a filter on the mask before you put it on, but there we go. So, it's easy to install the filters on this mask, because they go in the actual sort of front section there. However, the bad thing with the filters is it's weight to the front of the mask, pulling it down. So if you've got a heavy filter, that's not going to be the most comfortable of things. Where the filter is, it also blocks the speech diaphragm to an extent, so... Well, it's not a brilliant speech diaphragm gets worse because the filter's blocking part of the way. Now, said, this is a Warsaw Pact filter I've put on, and it works with both Warsaw Pact and NATO filters, which is a big plus. So, field of view is fairly good. My field of view is cut off about sort of like this to me when I'm looking. Down field of view isn't as good, but it's not terrible. Now, said, this is designed for civilians and not uh, militaries. You've got impact resistant lenses, but that doesn't mean they're impact resistant to bullets or airsoft or anything like that. It just means that you probably won't break them if you smack something into the mask. 
but as I said it was designed for civilians to be mass produced so what are you expecting in terms of quality so let's get the SLR out and yep I can iron sight with this absolutely fine how good a scope would be I don't know but in terms of actually being able to look down the gun sight I can do that with a big rifle like the SLR no problem also the filter does not get in the way of the rifle because when you do it like that, it doesn't get in the way. If you were left-handed, you wouldn't have an issue either, because the filter mount's here, not actually in the way on either side. So, that's good. You could use, as a survivalist, a rifle with this. As said, I haven't tested it with scopes. I will do that in a later video. But, I haven't tested it with scopes. Now let's try some helmets with it, and see how it works with helmets. Alright, let's see if it works with a riot helmet. In theory it would work where the filter's placed, but the helmet won't fit over the side of the mask, so no it won't work for the right helmet. I'll just try fully opening up the helmet and sliding it on this way. But no, it's not gonna fit. So no it won't work with a riot helmet. But will it work with um, a military helmet? Yes, it will work fine with a standard issue sort of Kevlar helmet. Obviously some nations helmets will differ. The ridge on this helmet won't go below the ridge of the mask there, but you should still be able to adjust the straps to tighten it and still give yourself mostly full head protection of the helmet on. Um, so as I said, the helmet will probably sit a bit higher on your head, offer less protection than normal, but it will still cover your brain. So there's obviously that. So. It works with rifles, it will work with standard infantry helmets, but not with riot helmets, unless you get one that's a lot wider around your head. So that's good. Another thing, surplus Israeli filters are very good, obviously you still need one that's roughly in date to work. Same as any other gas mask. However, Israeli filters are good. People keep asking me, are they safe? Yes, of course they're safe. They're very recent filters, most of them on the surplus market sort of 1990s forwards, they're perfectly safe. Obviously you need one that's been sealed properly and not not too old to work, but they are perfectly safe, there's no question about that. Some of them are green, some of them are tan, some of them are silver. Whether or not they work differently, nobody really knows. Most people seem to think the filters are um, exactly the same, but depending on who they're issued to, they're a different colour. Civilians get the tan filter, Civil defence personnel get a silver filter, grey filter. Uh, IDF troops get the green filter. But that might be speculation as well. But as far as everybody knows, uh, the filters are exactly the same. Maybe when the manufacturers of the filters produce them, like Shalom, they alternate them for either, you know, the various colours or stuff like that. One of the features I also like is it's got this neck strap so you can hang it from your neck when it's not in use so you can easily quickly put it on. So yeah. Overall, I think this is a very good mask for survivalists. You can find them fairly cheap on the internet. Sometimes you will need to do a bit of shopping around. As said, there are a lot of models of these. So, if you want a particular filter, make sure you're looking... Not filter, sorry, slip of tongue, feature. If you're looking for a particular feature, make sure you, um, obviously, read the descriptions carefully and look at the pictures. Not all of them have these voice diaphragms. Not all of them have a drinking tube, some of them have different types of lenses, some have elastics, some have rubber straps. I probably personally prefer elastic to rubber straps, but these are fairly decent rubber straps as rubber straps go. So, as I said, this is a good mask for survivalists. It's cheap, generally. I mean, you still have to shop around to find a good deal. It seems to be a very well-made mask. People sometimes say to me, should I get this as a G should I get a GP5 or the 4A1? Always go for the 4A1 if it's actually for a survival purpose. It fits more filters. Um, it's got more advanced features than the GP5. I say the problem with a GP5 is it can only fit GOST filters. Good luck finding non-asbestos GOST filters for cheap. You know, NATO filters are always the way to go on a gas mask. This can take both types, so it's a win-win. I said very easy to use, obviously it's easier to screw a filter on prior to putting it on, but you can still put a filter on it fairly easily, you know, once you've got the mask on. Decent field of view, as said, works with a rifle, works with some helmets, 
has an inner mask so it doesn't fog up too easily. The lenses are strong enough for what most people would want from them. As I said, there's no mask that will stop the bullets. So how much would I recommend you pay for these? Around $30 if you can get one for that. As I said, sometimes it's the shipping that gets you because um, if you're buying them direct from Israel, often the masks are a sensible price but the postage is just crazy. Because as far as I'm aware, they're replacing this mask now with one that's basically a plastic hood which takes a filter so you can wear glasses and things under it, which is obviously very practical. But for what this is, it's very good. As I said, it's designed to be a mass producible, cheap to make mask, but the features on it are fairly good for that. It doesn't fog up easily. You can use it with a rifle if need be. That might have been actually in the idea of it if Israeli civil defence units had it. The Israeli army IDF has the M15 mask, which is very good, but I think this probably was intended that you could use it with a gun, you know, in intentionally. Um, it's based off an old Draeger mask, but the Israelis have obviously made slight changes to it. But yeah, overall it does seem a very good mask for preppers. I think it ticks most of the boxes you'd want from it. But I think one of the things I like about it is how simple it is really. There's no complex parts to it that could break. Um, and even with this one, the drinking tube being optional is still really out the way in the mask. It's not one that protrudes and punches your face. So yeah, the Shalon 4A1, better known as the Israeli civilian mask, gets a big thumbs up from me. If you are a prepper, I would definitely recommend this mask for um, survival use. So what we're going to do now is do more videos. I don't have any particular day of the week I've planned to make these on, but we're going to be doing more videos on various gas masks that are commonly sold on the surplus market and would they fit the bill for a prepper or survivalist. So I'll see you on those videos if you're interested in those.